So after e4, e5, and then c3, our opponent can play f5 straight away. We have to punish this move. They're trying to basically gambit us. So you take. And now you have an immediate threat of play queen to h5, and the game should end very quickly. So knight f6 is the only move now to stop the tremendous threat. White now goes on with g4. The idea is to push. So let's look at a few options now, just to make things clear. d5 is a courageous attempt by black, but it loses. The idea is basically like doing some sort of reverse Muzio gambit. g5. And now bishop to c5, development. The idea is to give up the knight for development of the queen. It's a crazy attack. Take the knight. Queen takes back. And now queen h5. If queen were to block, then we will just swap everything and win. If g6, continuing the attack. Now we take in e5 with an attack on the queen. And an attack on c7. Position evaluated plus 5. And in this position, instead of queen takes in f6, what if black just castles? Continuing the development. Okay, queen f3 is the most accurate move. Now rook takes, also because we have double attack over d5, well, that loses. Because we can simplify, queen takes d5 now, forces a queen trade. If instead the black we had taken with the queen, same thing. And in this position, if instead black develops another piece, knight c6, idea of going to d4. Again, just simplify, you're winning. Right, from the start, let's look at this move again. Okay, take. Knight f6 only move. G4. We're looking at d5. Attack the knight. If black attacks your knight, that doesn't work because pawn takes. And when black takes your piece, you got check. Game over very soon. Right, so in this position, after g4, two options we're going to look at now. One of them is h5. Obviously, the, the opponent wants to take this pawn. Okay, push. And after knight to g4, putting pressure on f2 d4 comes now. This is very important because our opponent was attacking g5 and now you need to protect it. The knight is already trapped if you play h3 but you need to play d4 first. And here there's nothing. Pawn takes all best moves now. You just make a check. And now obviously king here is completely crazy. So for example king f7. Just check. And after king to g8 Queen c4 check. Only move is d5. And now you take with the knight. So in this position, after the check, bishop blocks. Oh, by the way, queen blocks is not good because simply knight to d5, threatening c7 and attacking the queen. So after the queen swaps, you take with the knight. And you're capturing this pawn position already evaluated plus 3. If bishop goes to d2, I mean d6 to protect c7, potentially play c6. Just take here. And white has an idea of playing knight b5. Capitalizing on the weakness. So even if black plays c6. Knight to f4. Attacking and putting pressure on h5. Preventing black from castling. However, even if black were to castle. The best move would be bishop c4 check. And then, then you could take this pawn. It's entirely up to you. And if black takes you. Take back. You got the bishop pair. Castle. And now h3 traps the knight. So in this position, bishop to e7. And now h3 attacking the knight. There's nothing. The knight has got nowhere to go. It's trapped. Pawn taking our knight is wrong because you take back. And you're threatening f6, winning another piece. If black castles, you play queen to f3. And now you're threatening queen to d5. So let's say, for example, black plays bishop g5, queen to queen to d, uh, d5 check and then when the king moves you are attacking the h5 with the rook it's completely over the rook cannot block because you're gonna play bishop to c4 anyway the oh and this happens even after rook e8 so check is devastating you don't have to worry about the discover the discover check of the bishop it does nothing so after d5 rook to h5 is the winning move Black can't even take the pawn in g5 anymore, and white is just going to be black can't take in b2 because this bishop becomes super strong. Rook e8, just play bishop e2, you are safe. 
So let's make a recap that we can close this video. Okay, f5 you take, knight f6, g4. g4. h5, g5, knight g4. d4, this is important. Pawn takes, and now check. Bishop blocks, h3. What happens after knight to f2? Sacrificing. Here, surprisingly, you play f6. The threat is very simple. Black can't take the rook now because then pawn takes g7 with an attack on the rook. If the rook moves, queen h5 is made. And here, after f6, if knight doesn't take the rook, but rather plays pawn takes. Okay, just take back. Surprisingly. Now it looks like the knight can take the rook because the black rook is not under attack. Now white plays knight to d5, capitalizing on this a7 square. This cannot be saved. If the black player plays rook to h7 to protect this more, queen to g2 wins. We're threatening queen g8 mate. If black goes back, then queen to g6 is also made very soon. Just check, king moves, check again, king moves, and then f7 is made. If black goes rook to f7, you just take here with the pawn. And after all the swaps, the white player will be completely winning. And by the way, in this position, after pawn takes in f6 and white plays, and black plays knight takes rook and then knight to d5. If black plays knight to g3, you just take the bishop. Queen can't take back because you checkmate. Knight takes queen. You take the queen with promotion. King takes. Bishop can go here with check. You're completely winning in material. You just give a check first. The king cannot, cannot attack the knight. When the king moves, you can recapture the knight. This rook is trapped and will be taken. The last recap will be the following. Take knight f6, g4, and now h6. Looks like it just stops our pawn. Okay, knight f3 attacking this pawn, which is crazy because the knight can now take our pawn. But first we play d4. It's a crazy variation, but we want to develop, right? And after pawn takes, knight takes back. There's now an attack on this knight. Wise development is excellent. Best move, most active move will be queen to h4. Threatening mate. So queen to e2 check. And now move like king to f7 is met with rook to f7, uh, rook to g1. Double attack on the knight. h5 maybe protecting the knight. h3. The knight has to move. Queen check. Blocking doesn't make sense because you're attacking it too much. So after the king moves. Bishop to g5, and this is attacking these two pieces, and the queen can't really go anywhere. So in this position, if instead of h5, black plays knight takes pawn in h2. Okay, well, bishop to e3, continue development. And after development, knight to c6, check. There was no way to stop this check, by the way. And after the king moves, long castle. Okay, let's go on with development. d6, knight to d5, attacking c7. King move to stop that from happening. Knight takes, check, uh, check, pawn takes. And then we win the queen. This is just a sample move. It, sh it couldn't have happened, it shouldn't have happened. But anyway, this knight is not going anywhere. The white player was, has been completely winning for the whole game. And in this position, one more mention. After the check, if bishop blocks, f6, surprisingly. <laughs> it's attacked by so many pieces. But obviously, the knight cannot take. Because queen check, king takes, and the knight f5 wins material. And if pawn takes, the same thing happens. Queen check, and then knight f5. So here you're wondering, what if queen takes? Well, now the knight becomes available, and you are defending this knight as well.